Fort Worth, a city just one hour west of Dallas, coined where the West begins. Sip on a drink at the Drover or walk the stockyards and see some cowboys. And steak. They love their steak. Did I also mention they love to gamble? Yeehaw! We sit down at the fort. It's a 1-3 game, $1,000 cap or 75% match. We're in for $1,500. We win a bomb pot right out of the gate and look down at ace jack offsuit from the low jack. I decide to raise it up to $50 over a few limpers and Dwayne in the plus one position decides to put in the call. The big blind also puts in the call. We are going three ways to the flop and uh, we are in position to all opponents and it comes king, king, deuce. When the action checks over to me, I think I'm gonna have more of the strong kings than my opponents. I'm also gonna have all those really good pocket pairs. I decide to go for a bet of $50. And Dwayne's a non-believer. He decides to put in the call, leading us off heads up to the turn, which is a great card for me. It comes the Jack of Diamonds. When Dwayne checks it over to me for a second time, I decide to check back on this turn, which I think is kind of a mistake. I think you should probably be betting when you're bluffing on the flop and catch up on the turn. Although in the grand scheme of things, checking behind can't be the worst play, and we see an interesting card, the Queen of Clubs on the river. When Dwayne checks all three streets over to me, I think we have the best hand. And when you have the best hand, you wanna go for value, albeit it's very thin value here with third pair. But I decided to go for $50 just trying to get called by pocket nines, pocket eights, or sevens. He does in fact put in the call. I show him the goods. He mucks his cards and $364 coming my way. Almost a dollar for every chip of the year. We get moved over to the main game and immediately look down at a very favorable hand. Ace king of clubs from under the gun and I raise it up to $20. Dwayne decided to follow me over here to the main game. He's on my left and puts in the call. And we are going heads up out of position which comes ace seven five with two spades. Now my poker coach Alvin told me in single raise pots you're going to want to start with a check when you're out of position. I'm not going to disobey him. I start with a check and Dwayne decides to bet out for $20. In this spot here, we could go for a check raise and try to target any worse aces, any flush or straight draws, or some of the time you also could be putting in the call and look to check raise on the turn. I decide to choose option B, putting in just the call, and when the jack of clubs peels off on the turn, I'm gonna try to go for that check raise, and uh, you can't check raise if you don't start with a check. That's obviously what I do, and Dwayne decides to copy and paste his bet from the flop onto the turn, he bets out for $20, and as if I wasn't gonna raise him now, I definitely have to jam all in, $175 effective. Lots of draws out there, like king, queen, queen, 10, six, eight, six, four, and of course, any two spades have the flush draw. This is a mandatory jam, good thing I decide to do it. And let's see if Dwayne can put in more money. He does not though, he finds the fold, and uh, just like that, we are two for two on the night. Let's see if we can move on into this next hand and play someone other than Dwayne. I look down at the ladies from the cutoff, and I raise it up to $40 over a $10 straddle. The button straddler decides to put in the call, that means we are going heads up out of position to a flop. The flop comes 953 all spades, and I debate going for a check here. But then I think, okay, there's all spades. I have the queen of spades in my hand. I have an over pair. Maybe I'll get some value here from a nine X or maybe a hand that has a king or ace of spades in it. Uh, so I decide actually to lead out into him for $40. The button decides to put in the call, tossing in eight red chips and we see the eight of spades peel off on the turn. I think if he's calling me on the flop, he has one of those hands that I mentioned. So I'm gonna go for a check here and see what he does on the turn. Surprisingly, he decides to check behind. I don't really think he's gonna be doing this with any king or ace of spades in his hand. So I'm gonna confidently go for a river bet or pick off a bluff on the river when it comes to six of hearts. Going for value now into the $164 pot, I decide to raise it up to $90. I just wanna get value versus any set, two pair, maybe top pair, or maybe even a worse spade like the jack or 10 of spades. 
What I don't expect though is for him to now decide to wake up and go for a raise. He decides to make it $300. And this really puts me in the blender because like I said on the turn, I'd expect him to bet with any ace or king of spades. So what is he raising here on the river? It's possible he thinks that I'm weak and uh, he wants to blow me off my hand. But uh, his story doesn't make any sense. I don't really think an ace or king of spades would play it this way. Obviously, that's what he's trying to say, but uh, his turn does not make much sense. So in the end of the day, you have to draw the line in the sand and I decide to put in the call. Hopefully, he shows me a bluff trying to blow me off an overpair with no spade. But uh, he did in fact have the ace of spades in his hand. He was trapping on the turn. Great job by him there. And $764 is his prize. All right, $1,900 in my stack. I decided to put on the $10 button straddle. And uh, we looked down at 7-8 offsuit. We get a raise from the villain in the plus one position and Benjamin, who looks like Jason Momoa there, decides to put in the call for $30 as well. I put in the call and we are off to a flop which comes nine, six, five, bang! We flopped the straight. The nutter butters, the nizzles, whatever you wanna call them. How good of a feeling is that? Putting in the extra $20 and flopping the straight. Pretty great spot, I would say so. The action checks over to me and I'm not gonna let it get checked through. Lots of things to get value from, pocket pairs, sets, maybe a thing like two pair, like six, five or nine, six. I decide to bet out for $30 and Benjamin puts in the call. Oh boy, we're off to the turn. It's not the best one though, it comes the nine of diamonds. It's a board pairing card, so now he could have filled up with uh, any of those sets like sixes or fives, but he decides to check it over to me for a second time. And in case he picked up a diamond draw, I decide to go large here for $110. If he decides to raise me, it's gonna be a weird spot but uh, he decides to fold, so $154 coming my way. Pretty awesome hand there. We look down at the ladies once again in this next one. I'm in the low jack this time and I decide to raise it up to $35. Obviously the $10 button straddle is on and this time we're playing against a fellow by the name of Carlos. He's in the cutoff. He decides to flat call for $35 and the big blind also comes in for the additional money. We are going three ways to the flop. The flop comes great for us, 10-7 deuce. It's pretty dry, we have the over pair, and the villain in the big blind decides to check. Out of position against Carlos and in between him and the big blind, I usually gonna start with a check. That's what I decide to do, and Carlos decides to go for a bet now of $100, nearly the size of the pot. When the villain in the big blind gets out of the way, the action's back over to me. I obviously didn't check this flop to fold, so I decide to start with a call here and see what he does on the turn. The turn now comes the four of hearts and obviously I'm gonna check it over to Carlos after he bets a pot on the flop. Let's see his sizing here on the turn. I don't expect him to slow down. Usually when players bet big on one street, they're uh, pretty much telling the tale that they're gonna go big on future streets as well. And just like that, my hunch is correct. He now bets pot again, $275 into the $316 pot. I can't fold just yet. Of course, there's eight, nine. He could have a hand like ace, 10, or maybe he picked up a heart flush draw like ace five of hearts or ace three of hearts. I mean, anything's a possibility, but I didn't come out to the fort to uh, fold for $275 with an overpair. So just like that, I put in more money and we're going off to a nearly thousand dollar river. The river now comes the five of diamonds. So all of those draws brick off, 866 in the middle, and I'm gonna start with a check once again. Hopefully he decides to go small here or just check behind. We can get to a showdown and probably scoop. But uh, that's not what Carlos decides to do. He has a little bit left in his stack. And by a little bit, I mean an over bet pot jam. And that's what he decides to do. He's gonna rip it all in. And uh, yeah, he has us covered. It's a $1,249 effective river jam. And that puts me in a tough spot. He's obviously a capable player. Not many people are going polar here on the river. It either means he has a strong hand like a set or two pair, or he has a bluff. If we think about all the bluffs, it's eight, nine, heart flush draw, maybe a hand like jack eight or jack nine for a gutter. I mean, yeah, there's just a lot of bluffs out there. Obviously the value is gonna be 10 sevens and deuces. I don't really think he's gonna flat call with tens if he's a good player. So that pretty much narrows it down to sevens or deuces. So he has a very narrow strength range and a very, very wide bluffing range. At the end of the day, when that's the case, we're gonna put in the call. I'm not scared money. I do have an over pair. I played it tricky on the flop and got myself in this situation. I'm gonna have to pay it off here and see what he has. So after a little bit of thinking, I don't love it, but I decide to put in the call. 
Unfortunately for us, Carlos immediately turns over one of the two hands we were scared of, Pocket Deuces. Yep, he flopped the set. It makes sense, he called 35 bucks and went pot, pot, jam. Oh man, there, queens go down in flames. What a cooler though, queens versus deuces and he flops the set. That 3.3K pot stings a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. It's getting shipped all the way over to Carlos, but we didn't just come with one bullet. I immediately buy back in for 2,500. I wanted to pull up GTO Wizard to see how I played this hand. You can see if the cutoff is calling pocket deuces. Yeah, it's really only around 15% of the time, but still in his range. After we see his flop of 10-7 deuce, the first point I want to see is, am I supposed to be checking? You can see here, yes, I'm supposed to be checking almost 100% of the time. When he goes for a bet, I'm obviously calling with my queens. Can I be raising? Yeah, I guess around a quarter of the time, but I put in the call. Turn comes a four and I obviously check. Uh, you can see his sizing is appropriate. He's gonna wanna be over betting here. Actually 125 or 175% is the preferred sizing. I'm supposed to put in the call, let's just make sure. And uh, yeah, we can see Queens is a pure call here, which is what I do. When the river comes to five, I'm never gonna be leading. I don't even need to be checking that. And uh, the deuces here is a 150% pot size bet, which is pretty much exactly what he did. He just ripped it. And uh, let's see if I made the right play. Pocket queens here is a 40% call, 60% fold. But against my exact hand of queen of hearts, queen of diamonds, it's nearly a 50-50 flip. So not the biggest mistake in the world for me there. If any of you guys wanna improve your game using a solver like GTO Wizard, there is a link down in the description that gets you a discount. So helping you get better. And it's a pretty fun tool. You can make sure you play correctly in the future. Let's go. And we're on to the next hand, a little bit of salt in the wound. It's the exact same hand that just did us dirty. Pocket Queens, the ladies strike again. This time we see an under the gun raise to $25. Action's on me and I'm not gonna flat call. Gotta get more money in with a premium hand. I decide to three bet it up to $80. And the action folds around to the cutoff who decides to put in the flat call. Interesting line from the cutoff. The action's back over to the under the gun player. Will he decide to call for 55 more dollars? Or will he go for the back four bet to $325? What is going on here? Four bets are so, so strong. It's such a narrow range. Ace, king suited and offsuit. Queens, kings, and aces. I don't even think he's doing this with jacks or tens at this stakes. So yeah, it's definitely concerning. At the same time though, I just lost a big hand with queens. I'm not gonna fold them just yet pre-flop. I'm gonna put in the call. I assume the cutoff will call as well. If he decided it's good for 80, it's probably gonna be good for 325 bucks. But when I put in the call, he decides to fold. So uh, maybe not getting the correct price to hit a set here. We're going off, heads up to the flop. At least we're heads up, right? There's gotta be something good for us. Then the flop comes jack 10 for rainbow. Decent flop for us. We're gonna have more of the jacks and tens. Not going for a five bet with jacks or tens would make complete sense for me. Whereas I don't really think he's gonna be four betting those hands. So uh, yeah, lots more jacks and tens in my range than his. And he wisely starts with a check. If I had a set here, I definitely would be mixing between betting and checking. So given the fact that I do have an over pair with some showdown value, I decide to check behind and see what he does on the turn. The turn pairs the board, it comes the 10 of hearts, and he checks it over to me for a second time. This is a great card for me to start betting on because if I had a jacks, I'd obviously have a boat. I could also have some hands like ace 10 suited, maybe 10 nine suited if I wanna get spicy. Yeah, definitely a lot more tens in my range than his. So I definitely like going for a bet here somewhere around 300 to $400. But uh, I decided that I have showdown value. I still think he could be trapping with kings or aces, scared of the jack or the 10. And I decided to check behind, which I think is kind of a mistake. We're playing super deep here. He has 2K, I have 2,500 having him covered. Even if he has a hand like kings or aces, imagine if I went large here for 400 and then I just jammed on the river. Like, can he confidently call off there knowing I could have jacks, ace 10, 10, nine? I mean, it's a tough spot. So if we wanna play some poker, we're gonna have to find some of these uh, spots here where I go for a spicy bet. I decided to check behind and let's see what the river card brings in. The river is one of the worst cards in the deck. It comes the king of diamonds. Ace queen gets there, although I double block it, but more importantly, ace king suited and offsuit now get there as well. This is the problem with checking back on the turn. We let some hands get there. Additionally, if he has pocket kings, there's no way he's folding now. So uh, now after checking flop and turn, he decides to wake up and bet. It's not a large bet, it's $325. I asked for a count, but uh, deep down inside, I know I can't call this off. This would be a punt. Now, what bluffs does he have in this spot? Maybe like ace, jack? I mean, he's not four betting that pre-flop, so we gotta let it go here. And uh, let's see if I make the right decision in real time. Yes, I do. The cards hit the muck. 
We lose that $1,100 pot, but uh, I don't give him any more money, which feels pretty great. What's up, Drew? What's up, say, say what's up to the people. Hey. Where are we? Where are we? We're right here in Weatherford, Texas. Alito. Yes, sir. At the port. What's up, bro? Yes, sir. All right, you guys, that wraps up that six hour session here from Fort Worth. I actually feel like I'm in Texas, all the way out here in the the western area of uh, Fort Worth here. Got in for 1500, got crushed, had to rebuy for 25 more hundred, got out for like 1879, so a net loss of 2121. How do I just remember all those numbers? That's crazy. But shout out to everyone who said hi to me here in Fort Worth. It's always crazy to go to a new room and like three or four people come up to me. And uh, that's all thanks to you guys. I got crushed in this one, but we're gonna get back on track in the next video for sure. If you guys are new, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below if you liked all those graphics. Uh, it always stings when you lose a big pot and then have to do extra work, taking the picture of the person and you know just putting all that extra information in there. But I hope you guys like that uh, extra effort and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.